Hello and welcome to this May edition of Local Image. I'm at beautiful Lake Vadness in Vadness Heights. And this location is very appropriate for two reasons. May is Water Awareness Month, and water is a common theme found in several of today's segments, including our first Local Image story. The story follows the flow of an idea that sprang from inside the new Vadness Heights Commons Event Center. The beautifully crafted complex was already busy with bookings, yet something was missing. And that something got the mayor of Vadness Heights to thinking, and then it wasn't long before the mayor thought of a young woman named Carly Schmidt. It's like painting naked without it. <laughs> When Carly Schmidt returned home from completing a fellowship in Germany, she reconnected with her Vadness Heights roots in a very deep way, one that will certainly leave a mark on her personally and professionally, but it's the mark she's helping others to make that will leave the biggest impression on the entire community. Mary's been following my artistic career for a while. Um, I'm familiar with her family and I'm friends of her son. We actually went to high school together. and. When last time I was back in the Twin Cities, she said, oh, we're building a new community center, event center in Vadness Heights, and I think it could be a really great place for some public art. Um, do you want to come by and take a look at it? And she came back with this great idea of doing this mural with all these pieces and have the community involved. And I thought it was very ambitious, and it made me a little nervous about how ambitious it is, but I, she got me on board because of the, the goal of it. This challenge of trying to include the entire Vadness Heights community, whether that be people that work in Vadness Heights, people that live there, people that grew up in Vadness Heights, including all of these people in one mural project is pretty overwhelming, but also really exciting. So where will the mural be placed and how big is this large scale piece? Just above the benches, there'll be a little bit of white space, but then the mural will go up to come just under the capstone on the fireplace. And the murals will extend across the width of the wall on each side. The final image is going to be about eight and a half feet by four feet two inches. Um, and all together with the one inch tiles, that is 11,200 tiles, um, which is actually very close to the population of Vadness Heights, which is where a bit of that symbolism comes from. Symbolism aside, getting the council to approve the plan for this community art project was artist, a challenge. Artist Carly Schmidt has just done an amazing job of really wanting to engage people. And I knew that in order for the council to really feel comfortable with doing something, we needed to know how much it would cost, where the money would come from. Um, all those and have a concept because they wouldn't approve something that they didn't couldn't see and really I identify. I'm going to support this. I'm not Initially I was really skeptical. Uh, uh, I guess the gentleman's left. I'm not an art person as I said at the council meetings. I thought okay I can't use my thinking because I'm so conservative on that area and, and run the and, and put my thinking in front of all these people and, and say no. I had to think of what most people in the community probably would want. And so I thought, yes, they would like this. So I said, well, you know, I gotta take a chance on this thing. With council approval in place, a committee comprised of a cross section of the community was formed. The mural they decided would be titled Reflections. The name played on many levels, they agreed, but how can so many small hand-marked tiles transform into a serene, familiar landscape of trees reflecting into water? I'm gonna take a photograph of this and then I'll put it in Photoshop. Um, and then that will help me lay out the pixels for it. The color is very similar to the base color of the tile, so that when you're up close, you can see the mark that's been made. I mean, even if you're five feet away. But once you step back 10 feet from the mural, some of these colors start to blend together um, because the definition between the two colors on the tile isn't that strong. Um, so then the image blends together. And instead of seeing all these individual marks, you see the portrait of the community. In agreeing to the project, the council made it clear that reflecting the community artistically meant doing so without the use of taxpayer dollars. We applied for a Metropolitan Regional Arts Council grant, which the council author authorized us to apply for. The grant application required that other partners also be included in the project. And we needed two partners. And so we invited Merrick and s and Office Products both to be our partners. I think with Merrick, what's really wonderful is they serve people, they provide opportunities for adults who have disabilities. And so 
we need to have the tiles primed and painted before people can sign them. And so we're hiring, we're paying wages to their clients to do that. Uh, we submitted a bid to Carly and the advisory committee, uh, which was accepted. And so our clients are painting 9,000 of those 13,000 tiles. But what I think is especially symbolic about that is oftentimes people who have disabilities are regrettably marginalized in a community. And this is so symbolic because in this case, they're going to cover every inch of our community landscape because they will have painted all these tiles. With a $12,000 grant in hand, the next step was to find matching funds to help market the mural project. We needed to about, raise about $6,100. So my plan was to go to six different businesses or individuals and ask them each to contribute a thousand. Well, it just so happened the first person I called, Ron Glassman with the Glassman Family Foundation, you know, I described the project and asked him if he would like to contribute, and he said, sure, and I had my fingers crossed hoping he'd say a thousand dollars, and I said, well, how much would you like to contribute? And he said, the whole thing, count me in. And it just kind of blew me away, and it made it so much easier, and then on top of that, we have five, we approached five businesses to help us sponsor advertising because the key to this is getting information out to people. A donated billboard along Highway 35E in Vadness Heights spread the word about the Make Your Mark project in a big way, and it didn't take long for people to start showing up ready to take up a tile and make it their own. So the response we got from the community was awesome. I thought people would really be engaged with this because it, it is very pers it, it's as it's personal to people. People can get their loved ones involved and their friends and their neighbors. That doesn't surprise, well it surprised me we had over a thousand signed tiles the first weekend. Now that, wow, people do really care about this. We already have so much paperwork on the project, um, but people are being asked to fill out, you know, name as they, as they would like to have it in the key. Um, there's a place for them to do some sketches, which is kind of fun to kind of see what their creative process involved. Um, and then there's a question that asks, what is your connection to the community? Whether you live there or you grew up there, um, this is a way of having that documented here. Um, so we already have a lot of these. <laughs> we'll get a lot more because this is only, oh, this is my second grade, um, second grade teacher. <laughs> Carly was in my very first class 22 years ago. And just to know that it's your students have gone on to do great things, that's what teaching is about. So I was so thrilled that she was coming back and I thought for my own students this year to be able to talk about that and for them to be able to meet her that would be just very inspiring. Why I wanted to have a tile was I thought I'll always be a part of this community. And it's really funny just to see what people want to put on their tile and what they would like to have be their memory in this community. As a teacher, um, I always sign everything with a heart because I don't know that I should write love out there. So I put a heart and I just put my initials. And I thought any of my students who saw that would know that was me. A lot of the men are a bit more hesitant to sit down and get involved and oftentimes they say like, oh, my wife will do it. Um, but in those situations, I like to kind of try and engage these guys, um, which is actually how this tile came about. Um, He's one of the members of the Lions Club in Vadness Heights. His name is James. And he came and sat down and was, you know, kind of brainstorming. I don't really know what to do. Um, so we brainstormed some ideas together. And I said, well, I'll, I'll paint the L on the tile if you want to, and then you can work out your name. Those yet to make their mark will have plenty of opportunities to do so throughout the month of May and during other community events this summer. Four days a week, we'll be having events um, where families can come, you know, grab your neighbors, bring a whole community of people, bring your gourmet club, bring whoever you want. Um, they can email us and we'll make special arrangements for an appointment for them if they want. Also, we'll be at city events, so at Taste of Vadness we'll be there too. Um, I am asking people to also f uh, like us or friend us on Facebook because that's another way of getting information. Just as we're starting to do this, all of these little stories are coming out. And all of these stories about you know, what this one tile means to this one person and how this tile is kind of a representation of their life in this community. It's a huge story. You know, volumes could be written on the story. And we're going to have 11,200 of these stories within one work. So I think the end result is going to be more dazzling and more powerful than I can even wrap my head around at this point. So what will the mayor and Carly do for their tiles?
I think I might put can do on my tile because that's my attitude about life. If I'd rather look at an idea or a suggestion about how you can make it happen as opposed to say, oh, we can't do that. So I think that's going to be my tile. Yeah, I'll have a tile. I think I might want to be the last tile <laughs> because normally when you're doing an artwork, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to say I am the artist of this artwork because it really is a community's art piece. But I am thinking that I would like to add one of my tiles as one of the final pieces, just because that's, that's what you always do when you're an artist. You always put your signature in it somewhere. <laughs> So of course we wanted to be a part of this historical community piece, so we made a local image tile as our mark for the mural. You can look for it when the mural is unveiled later this fall. And speaking of history making, that's exactly what happened inside the Vadnais Heights Sports Center when the Minnesota Warriors took on the USA Warriors for their very first home game inside the new arena. On location sports producer Nicholas Anderson was there and captured this local image segment. And this is our first home game and we're playing our sister team, the USA Warriors, and they are only two Warriors teams in the country. USA Warriors were, were here first. They were founded in uh, uh, 2008 at uh, Walter E. Army Medical Center. It's all uh, wounded, disabled, uh, and, and injured uh, veterans. Me and Andy were both injured. Walter Reed and roommates there when we were both in the hospital. He got injured in Iraq. I got injured in Afghanistan. So we used to play hockey down in uh, Washington, D.C. when we were rehabilitating from injuries. You listen to a lot of them talk, and there are some pretty amazing stories. You know that, that guys have been through in terms of uh, you know going to war or, or, or their military respective military service. You know it's having that bond, that brotherhood that the armed services have. They don't really necessarily even know each other. They walk in the locker room and it's instant, instantly they know each other. Whether they've met it in the past, but they there's a bond there. It's absolutely irreplaceable. Um, I think part of it is a huge connection to the military. It's, it's that brotherhood's there. They don't have to explain each other. They know what they've been through and they connect. It's a great program because it improves the uh, mindset of a veteran. You're going through so many different things, loss of life, loss of limb, loss of your job, and everything else. So common interests bound us together. Everyone's injured, everyone's hurt. So we all get together, have a good time, and we don't even realize we're injured. We just get out there, have a good time, and we make things happen. It's all about having fun. Come out here every week to practice. And it's just having fun. We get along, we laugh in the locker room, and practices are great. Well, I think, my, you know, my favorite part is getting a chance to, uh, you know, play a game that I love with, with veterans. Uh, it's, it's freedom. It's outstanding. It's camaraderie. Uh, most of all, I like to, to get out there and skate and play because I used to play, but also to show guys who are injured more recently that, man, they can get up and do it, too. A community response to the Warriors has been fabulous. We have, obviously, the sports facility here has donated ice. They have adapted a rink so that sled players can come on on and off and have their own benches. So there's this physical portion that's huge. But support, we have the crowd in the stands are from Vadnais Heights. They're supporting here. They want to show these men that they're appreciated, they're respected, and they're loved. So we have this huge um, group of people who really care about them and for our players it's really phenomenal to know that there's people who they have never met before that love them, support them. Minnesota loves its veterans and I, uh, I know that Minnesota loves its hockey. Because D.C. you don't have prominent hockey as you have here. Hockey is life and that's what we are. We're all about hockey. It's great to see this, the community, and be here and enjoy it. You know, I know the, the guys really wanted to, you know, win this one, you know, on our home ice, uh, you know, first first game on home ice uh, in history. So, yeah, I mean, we were, uh, the guys were very happy with the win. I, th I thought our team, you know, picked things up a little bit, especially in the third period, and it was a good win for our team. It was a great time. It was, a good, it was good to see that national team. It was a fun competition. Uh, hopefully the program will grow. Hopefully we'll get some more uh, vets in here, get a little bigger, uh, build some friendships that will last. We are very grateful to uh, all the uh, volunteers and staff that, that came together today and, uh, to, to make this event happen. Again, this is a historical 
uh, very historic matchup, you know, in terms of bringing, you know, the, the wounded and injured injured warriors up from Washington D.C. and then and then the, you know the wounded, injured, disabled guys from from Minnesota. So warm. Thank you to all the fans and all the uh, the staff and, and volunteers that came out to make that happen. Minnesota is the land of over 10,000 lakes, including Lake Vadness. And because Lake Vadness is a source of drinking water, boats are prohibited and only shore fishing is offered to visitors. Having abundant access to drinking water is something people living in many third world countries like Haiti are in desperate need of. So when I learned of a water purifying invention designed for easy use by these countries and created by a couple of local 3M retirees, I just had to find out more. My curiosity took me to where else the driveway connected to the garage where the solar pasteurizer was created right in North St. Paul and as it happens right down the street from where I grew up. Well it's a solar pasteurizer, it's for pasteurizing water primarily for the third world. And you take water out of the a pond or the river or wherever you can. You pour it in here, and this is a, a simple uh, screen to keep the twigs and bugs Cloth and stuff filter. out of it. Yep, it, does, it is a real good filter, yep. but you can put muddy water in there. We don't recommend it, but it'll be... It, it'll if be, you had to. Yes, it'll be drinkable. Okay, and so we'll get more into the details on this, but okay. first, what made you even think about this idea? Where did... Okay, oh, he's well, reaching. There's this is right here. here. Uh, here political sign. And I looked at it and said, my gosh, what a good heat transfer system this would be if you put the sun on one side and water in all these little grooves and uh, right insulated it. And it would look like this. And how does that fit in there, Bill? And it would go like this. And all the way up here, there's about 110 of these little tube, tubes comes up here. And it comes all the way up through there. Here's the thermostat. And uh, when it gets warm enough, it comes out here and goes into the pasteurized water bucket. It's that simple. And the water won't come out unless it's 160 degrees or warmer. And uh, that's enough to pasteurize water or pasteurize milk. And kills all the bacteria that's dangerous to mankind and it's drinkable uh, when it comes out. Okay, so it doesn't have to be at boiling that's right. temperature to purify the water. That's it's, the whole reason why this is being built because you don't have to boil water which, to, to pasteurize it. Okay. So we can get a lot more water output because we don't pasteurize it instead of boil it. Okay. So it'd, it'd be impossible to boil with this arrangement. You right. have to have a much a better system. A lot of heat. A lot mm -hmm. of heat. So obviously the beauty of this is you're using the sun, which places like Haiti, and that's one of the mm -hmm. countries that you'd like to help out with this um, this project. So but places like that that have a lot of sun would benefit from something like this. Absolutely. So it, how how easy or hard was it to create all of this? Did this take a long time to lot, come up with? A lot of well, hours? Well, we've been at it for about three and a half years, something like that. And you run into all kinds of problems with something that simple. And you have to work them out, try other things and... Trial and error? And, oh, a lot That's of that. A, did you want to give up at any point? Not so much trial and error in the principle, but in the materials. Uh, and how do you put them together and how do you keep it from leaking? Yes. We're experts at making leaks, yeah. <laughs> and, and we didn't want leaks, so we finally have captured it. Bill finally found a component that worked, a okay. comp an adhesive that worked. So did you ever, it took you over three years to get to where you are today right. with this. Did you ever want to just like throw your hands up, or did you have to see <laughs> this through? We, we would have given up except that we did this at 3M, 
And if it failed, you just keep working at it because you get paid for it. See, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> so you so were, were used in that to it. Mindset. You oh, knew yeah. that we're you used had to, to that. Fat. You knew you could solve this problem, right? Mm -hmm. But now, once you solved it and you saw that this really works, that was just kind of the start of a new chapter, right? Because yeah. the other part of this story gets a little more complicated, a little maybe out Definitely. of your your comfort zone. Tell us a little bit about what came next. Well, the next came, <laughs> thing that came next was getting them into these countries that needed them, and we thought it was going to be a lead pipe cinch to get them into Haiti, and it, it's just a, a, a horrible problem trying to get them through the customs at Haiti. And we've had four of them down there on the docks at Haiti, and they're charging us a exorbitant amount of money to for the dock storage, and Finally, after six months, we've got uh, four of them in there, and and um, it, they're not quite set up yet. And we had one come in through another channel into the northern part of Haiti, and that's uh, set up and in operating. But we want, want to get this experience to find out. Uh, uh, we know the can produce about four gallons an hour up here in the Minnesota sun, but down in Haiti, I would expect about double that. And if it's about double that, that means that they should be able to get a, a um, regular 50 gallon drum in a day, which awesome. is just awesome. Yeah. Well, obviously you guys are doing this kind of on your own. I mean, what kind of funding help do you have, or what do you need? What do you want people out there to know about what you're trying to do here, and what kind of help can people bring? Well, this far, we pretty much use our own funds on this. We had one guy stop and give us twenty dollars. He just went by I know, here. And, it was great. We <laughs> had all kinds of people stop. We got a lot of people you're, come by and visit. You know, you're it's like well known in the hood. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like the old time blacksmith shop. You know, yeah. you got to keep working, otherwise you get nothing done. But they want to visit. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> and we've been wide open to the public. We got an ideal spot here yeah. where the sun beats in here. Actually, we moved a tree that gave us more shade. Shade. Well, we need somebody to manufacture and get them to the customer. Now, we've discovered that every country wants them made in their own place okay. because they want the jobs and they uh, want to be self-sufficient. Which well, is very doable. Yes. But it's very difficult to get to that point. Because you got to have people with some skill to do this. Parts of it doesn't need a lot of skill, but the other part does. So will you guys be traveling to some of these countries to help train? Not likely, <laughs> but somebody has to. Okay. That's what we need is or people fine. that would go over with them and show the people. And for instance, in Haiti, they're starting up with no trained people there. That's so going to be difficult. If somebody watching had it in their heart to learn how to operate one of these and work with you and said I'll go down and I will train people in would that be helpful <laughs> that would be wonderful and we would be glad to train them free of charge and would love to train them so that they have the expertise to teach these people and well, I, I also know that you guys would like to kind of start a website so you can share some of this information, but that's That'd be nice. on the to-do list. And so if anyone out there is willing to offer their help in starting up a website for these two scientists. <laughs> well, that would be, uh, that'd be helpful, yes. Sure. Yeah. You know, I know it's going to happen, but all the help that you can get, I'm sure you'll, you'll take it. So, But what a pleasure, Bob. My old neighbor, my mom still lives up the street. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Judy. Another great story about people with a can-do attitude. And we wish Bob and Bill the best and hope they get the help they need in order to help those in need of clean water. Now, on to our final local image story. A boat is being built by students attending Northeast Metro 916 Independent School District, and they're getting the help of an organization called Urban Boat Builders. Our goal uh, with Urban Boat Builders is to uh, uh, support positive youth development through the use and making of wooden boats. Students have the opportunity to be exposed to building a boat, working with each other, self-pride, 
they're a nice team and they've worked really well together this year. Yep. This looks very good okay. together. All right. In the beginning, they were all separated. And to now watch each one of them, the inner relationship between all of them, they really care about what each other wants to do. This boat's uh, what's called a Norwegian pram. Um, and it's uh, a very unique boat in that uh, it, uh, it doesn't use any forms to create this. So uh, each piece is fitted by eye um, to a shape that you think is pleasing and that's going to fit the purpose that you need. Um, and then it's fitted to the boat using copper rivets and there's about 400 copper rivets. Each one has to be installed by hand um, and it takes two students to install each rivet. Uh, it has overlapping planks and the only thing keeping those, the water out of this boat is a very tight fit. Uh, there's no glues or adhesives in this boat, and so uh, it's very important that they do a good job so they can keep the boat dry. <laughs> if we're going to be a, a craftsman about this, I think you respect things more um, when you build something and you know what goes into it. And then when people look at this, they'll say, oh, they pay attention to the detail. Okay, they got all their screws lined up. There's also that sense of responsibility to do a good job with whatever you're doing, to do justice to what you're doing. That's, that's the goal. There we go. I've learned how to plane, block plane. I've, uh, well, I've learned that it takes a lot of patience to blah, 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 blah in a super long time. And it's very fun. At first, I thought it would be boring, but now it's sort of fun because it's really interesting learning how to do stuff. Hey, Joey, you need anything? Yes, new lines. Okay, I can do that. Can you? You know where they go? Yeah, I can figure it out, but it's about looking at this. And what we're trying to do is work with success, teaching them to be successful teaching them what they're good at, not what ju they're just really bad at. Let's work on what you're really good at. Failure isn't an awful thing, but we've learned how to adapt to, our, to it or to how to develop better skills. And that's what we really want the students to learn. You know what? Keep trying. Keep going on. And it'll be all right. Life knocks you down and you get back up. <sighs> Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. See you Wednesday, Brian. We'll see you, Alan. Be done. Take care. Well, that does it for this May edition of Local Image. We're working on our June edition, and we want your feedback on our story ideas. We invite you to like us on Facebook. Just search On Location TV 19, and we'll keep you updated on Local Image and all of your favorite On Location programs. Until next month, I'm Judy Skyvoss, and I do thank you for watching Local Image. <laughs>